Hi, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Detailed. Canada-based debit card issuer Shake, or ShakePay as they've become more popularly called, has up until very recently accepted Bitcoin-only deposits, made fiat conversions on behalf of their clients, and then those funds are then spendable anywhere Visa is accepted. Very recently, however, ShakePay has added their second supported cryptocurrency, and surprise, it's Dash. Here to tell you about the whys and the whens and how you can get your hands on one of these accounts, be it a card or, yes, a phone-based account only, is the co-founder and CEO of ShakePay, Jean Amuni. So, Jean Amuni, uh for anyone who might not know, tell us what is your position at ShakePay, or is it just Shake? Uh, so, Do I say Shake? Uh, or Shake? Yeah, so we started out with Shake, uh, and then you know ShakePay.co, and everyone's just kind of been calling it ShakePay. So I, I think we're moving more towards, uh, yeah, just saying ShakePay. I think it's a bit easier uh, to keep it going. It's catchy. It is catchy. It is catchy. Have you seen our new logo? We have the uh, the panda, the blue. It's a blue red panda. Um, I have seen it. It's nice. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm the uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of ShakePay, and yeah, I mean we're we're making it really easy for people to spend their Bitcoin, to spend their Dash um, when they travel. We have a uh, we have a debit card, a Visa debit card that allows people to swipe, uh, chip and pin, and we also have the first mobile tap and pay uh, for crypto, and so you can use your phone and just start tapping and paying away, kind of like Apple Pay. People oh. have been calling it Bitcoin Pay, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> so it's not just a card, like just a debit card, which is refillable with Bitcoin and or Dash, but you also have a mobile app, which, as you say, functions like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, and that it will, where does it tap? Like in the credit card machine? Yep, yep, yep. So anywhere Apple Pay is accepted uh, in North and South America. So we're, we're, we're only supporting countries in North and South America right now. But I'll show you the app real quick. Let me see if I can load it up. And, oh, sure. Yeah. So this is okay. So this is mo this is the app. This is the Shake app. When someone signs up and they get a card, it looks okay. like any other mobile banking app. But you can notice at the top right, right? Yeah, top right. There's a little icon, um, and that's for tapping and paying. My goodness. It's so pretty how, awesome. What it, what kind of signal is it sending out, and <laughs> what is uh, it talking so to? Yeah, it's uh, so it uses the NFC chip, um, and it's only available on Android right now. It, it, it works exactly like your card does, or like Apple Pay does. It communicates with the reader, uh, the OS terminal reader um, that you could just Apple Pay with. You can use you can use Shake with. Um, it's it's very much it's very much integrated into the system that exists already. So there's no you know the merchant doesn't need to be anything special. It doesn't need to be. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be like a Shake terminal. It doesn't need to be a Bitcoin terminal. It's just any Visa terminal that accepts contactless uh, payments. Right. So now yeah. I'm trying to more completely understand the magic. Yeah. What part of your phone? Like, do you have to like put like the face, like the screen part of your phone above the NFC reader, or <laughs> <laughs> help me? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's, it's a good question because um, so every phone. So okay, okay, so. It works with Android phones that have an NFC chip. Okay, so not every no not every Android phone has an NFC chip. Okay. Uh, but most of the recent ones do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the Nexus lines, uh, I think most of them or all of them have an NFC chip. The, the Samsung Galaxy ones, the ones that don't catch fire, um, have NFC chips. Um, so I I don't know exactly where it is, but it's it's somewhere here. You just really have to bring your phone close. Uh, within a couple of centimeters, inches, if you're in the U.S., um, uh, it, the phone will buzz when you get when you get the payment through, and it's pretty magical. I mean, we we have a bunch of users that are using it. Just created a Twitter moment actually with all the users saying how amazing Shake has been. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so so you support North and South America currently. Is it like um? All merchants who have a credit card terminal are also NFC compatible, or is it just a percentage who are NFC compatible? Uh, it's not every terminal that will accept uh, the tap and pay. 
Um, it's part of this new movement uh, behind the credit card and the credit card industry that they're moving to EMV, which is, I don't want to get too much into it, but essentially the, the field is moving towards uh, more secure payments and tap and pay is one of these features. Um, and so most of the terminals are being upgraded to contactless tap and pay. Um, Although in the U.S. it's still really hard to find tap and pay terminals. I'm from Canada. I'm from Montreal actually, and in Canada we've sort of wiped the floor already. It's it's available everywhere. I you know I can go buy groceries. I can go buy even restaurants. I can go to uh, what else? Clothing, whatever. Um, these stores will have tap and pay. Um, in the U.S. it's still very very. They're having trouble getting it distributed, and it's all part. I don't want to get into it, but yeah. So it's it's it, there are some places in the U.S. where it does it, where it is accepted. Uh, we use it all the time, mm -hmm. um, but it'll it'll get there. It's uh, it's it's becoming more widely accessible. Mostly, I would say, mostly due to Apple Pay being sort of the front runner pushing for this technology. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting and it's awesome. I mean, if I don't need to carry my wallet, I could just my phone, and when yeah. I go buy something, you could just tap, tap, tap. It's amazing, and we, you know, we use it all the time in the U.S. now, living entirely off of Shake, which is great. Shake Pay, which is great. So, tell, when I feel like I've heard of Shake Pay for like a while now. When did you start up? Uh, so we we're, we're actually fairly new. Uh, we started just a few months ago, early, earlier this year. Just a few months ago. Um, yep, yep. All right. I yep. guess we're, my memory is not to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe what you heard from, uh, from us is when we so we integrated Dash just recently. Actually, we've been testing it for a few months now. Um, we've been really close with the community and the developers and, and the Dash Foundation, uh, Ryan and and Daniel and Andy, and we've been you know we've been talking about integrating Shake and it's it's been a great conversation and the guys behind Dash are, are amazing. Um, and so we, we integrated a few months ago and had been sort of beta testing the feature for a while now, and we just released it to the, to the public. And so now anyone can go into Shake and just, it's, it's open to the world. And so that's where all this PR is coming from. Maybe that's where you heard Shake Pay. Yeah, could have been. So to clarify, so if you're, if you're living in the United States or something like I am and you don't have the confidence that all of the merchants you encounter who accept credit cards will have the NFC compatible terminals. Would a customer in that scenario then want to have a card and yep. the mobile app? Is that how it would need to work? Yep, yep. So I have a card as well. Uh, if I need to buy gas, usually gas in the United States, they don't, they don't get the tap and pay. Um, if I need to buy gas, I'll just use my plastic card. And the mobile app links every card, so you, I can have my virtual card, I can have my plastic card. Uh, within the app, I can see the transactions, I can add funds, all directly through the app. It's, it's really very, um, it's, it's, it's quite good actually. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, sign up, give it a try. Oh. <laughs> all your view. <laughs> um, what is your fee structure? Uh, so, so our fee structure is very, is very similar to many of the other ones. Um, we're charging. A one percent fee uh, for the conversion rate, mm -hmm. and you know one dollar a month um, to get a plastic card. It's fifteen bucks to get it shipped. Uh, it ships in many countries around the world, but not the United States. Um, so we cannot onboard uh, customers who have a U.S. address. Okay. Yeah. But yep. you can um, can customers who have a U.S. address use your mobile app or not that either. So, so you can sign up. You can sign up to Shake using a secondary non-US address. Um, we, we don't verify your details until you pass a certain amount of transactions. I think mm -hmm. it's twenty-five hundred dollars the limit for an unverified account. Um, so okay. you can sign up, use a secondary address, uh, and once you know, if you need to, you need to, if you need to go past that, then you'll we'll have to verify your account. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, and then for all other countries, these hang-ups. And difficulties don't apply. Is that? Oh, uh, it's the same thing. Once you reach twenty five hundred dollars, then you need to be uh, verified. So we just need a proof of identity and proof of address. Then you have no limit. To keep sending. Um, no yeah, I, where where we are going though, I and mean, this is this is very much like the the 
beta. I, we're, we're in beta right now. So shake is shake beta at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Where we're going is something way more interesting. Uh, so it'll be a, it'll, yeah, it's going to be a platform that allows you to travel the world and never have to worry about foreign exchange. And so a lot of our customers are from, we have, we have customers in like 92 countries right now. That's a lot. And it's a lot of countries. And I actually checked, there's 196 countries, so we're almost halfway there. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, there are and, 196 total. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, in total. In the world. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I mean, when, when people travel, they don't want to worry about you know, foreign exchange. Am I getting robbed from using my credit card, my debit card? Um, and so very much our MO is to remove foreign exchange uh, forever. You never have to hear that word again. And so that's where we're going as a, as a company. ShakePay is going towards removing foreign exchange for people when they travel. Using cards abroad is really expensive, isn't it? Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on the scenario. Um, maybe here's a tip for people who, who don't know. When you're traveling, let's say you have an American card or your Canadian card and you're traveling to Europe, um, you, know, you swipe your card and then it asks you, do you want to pay in your local currency? Or do you want to pay, sorry, do you want to pay in your native currency or the local currency? Never choose to pick in your currency. Always choose to pay, if you're going to Europe, for example, always choose to pay in euros. You're going to get a better rate. That's, I guess that's a tip for everyone to know. Um, yeah, yeah. So then, so, so then the vision you have for these fees to be eliminated is that uh, someone loading up their ShakePay account with Dash in, say, whatever country they were, uh, you're saying that that would just involve the 1% conver conversion fee because they'd be going from Dash to the fiat currency of wherever they happen to be at the time? Correct. And you, yep, correct. And you'll be able to hold currencies and you'll be able to hold different currencies. So let's say, again, I'm a, I'm a Canadian. Uh, I'm, I know I'm going to the U.S. and I load up my card with Dash or Bitcoin. Um, I can then say, I want to transfer this, you know, one Bitcoin into U.S. dollars, have it stored in U.S. dollars, and then when I go traveling to the U.S., I swap my card and it's taken in U.S. dollars. And I don't have to worry about foreign exchange, and then I can go to South Africa, I can go to uh, China, Japan, Australia, etc., and never have to worry about the exchange rate because at least I'll be confident that Shake is giving the best rate, uh, and that's sort of what we're that's sort of what we're doing. That's that's where we're headed. Really so now, exciting. Yeah, it is. Uh, for so for the few months that you have existed now, have you been Bitcoin and Dash the whole time, or was yep. it Bitcoin first and you decided to begin oh. integration of Dash later? Yeah, it, it was Bitcoin first. Uh, so we mm -hmm. started with Bitcoin, um, and then one of our users, I'm going to call him out. His name is Matt. He sent us, he sent us an email saying, Hey, have you heard of Dash? Are you guys interested in uh, implementing Dash? And I was like, Oh, what is Dash? <laughs> like, I didn't know what Dash was. Really? Oh, oh yeah. This is, I, I know it's, uh, I feel guilty, but uh, <laughs> to be fair, I'm, I'm very pro Dash right now. So maybe it'll make up, makes up for, for that. Uh, but he sent us a message. He said, Hey, you should check out, uh, you, know, you should check out Dash. It'd be really cool if you guys integrated it. There's some, you know, here are some awesome features about Dash. Uh, and so I started reading up on it. I, you know, I watched the videos. And I, I, I started to understand what Dash was, and, and I'm, I'm very excited about Dash. I, I think as a as a currency, it's uh, it's done a lot of things that I would say, hey, you know, that's sort of the way that I would bring Bitcoin, uh, where Bitcoin has not gone. And, and so I'm very excited about Dash. And so you know, we we started seeing how we can implement it, um, and then we did. We implemented it and beta tested it, and then just released it. Yeah. So, yeah. To answer your question, we did start with Bitcoin, uh, but now it's it's uh, Bitcoin or Dash, whatever you prefer. I see. You know, I have to say I echo your sentiments about Dash in that, I mean, I I was so interested in Bitcoin um, for a while, and mm -hmm. the uh, the reason my interest shifted um, so completely to Dash was that. I just looked at Dash as where I thought Bitcoin should yeah. be at this time. Not that it's something like different from Bitcoin, but rather that it's what I wanted and what Bitcoin should have been after eight years. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It, so, it's very, very much trying to be transactional, right? If you're thinking about a digital currency that will act as a way for me to spend 
in real life, like if I if I want to go buy a coffee or something, like I I, I can't send Bitcoin. Um, I can use Shake, or you know, eventually I'll be able to use Dash, and and that's yeah, you know, that's essentially. I mean, we we've integrated sorry, sorry we've interested uh, we've integrated uh, Instant X or Instant Send. Uh, so if people are linking their cards in Dash, a couple seconds and your your account is loaded. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that yeah. seems. I mean, does that? Do you accept zero confirmation Bitcoin top ups, or do you wait for a confirmation? Yeah, we wait. Yeah. yeah. I wow. I mean, yeah. I mean that that does make quite a difference if someone is wanting to sell their crypto in the moment to make a specific purchase. I mean, with Dash, it'll be available to them instantly. You, Jean, can know that you are protected from double spends. But I mean, okay. So with those two like differences. It between using your service with Bitcoin where you have to wait and using it with Dash where you don't. Um, I know your company is still so young, but have you noticed any differences in like your customer base yet? Like are you like 90% Dash or I'm sorry, 90% Bitcoin, 10% Dash or is there some, where are you on, on how your customer base is split on how they're paying you? Yeah, I, I would say it's mostly Bitcoin, uh, mostly because Dash has just been released. I mean, it's a week old, two weeks old. <laughs> Is that uh, awesome? Okay. Day. I know you've been in beta for a while, yeah. but okay, you're saying public beta for a week now. <laughs> I am in early. This is this is ground level journalism. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we did see a really big uptake in Dash users since the launch. I mean, it's it's sort of been pushed around in the social web. A lot of people tweeting about us, etc. And so we've seen a big uptick in our in our dash in our dash users and the you know the people who are loading dash, how much money's coming in from dash. Um it's it's really impressive. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Okay. Well I think I have just one final question for you, Jean, sure. which is so if I understand you correctly, um the the card, the shape pay card is available to be shipped Anywhere in the world except U.S. addresses, and I just wanted. Pardon? Yeah. Sorry. Please continue. I'll, I'll answer. Oh, okay. Well, and I just wanted to ask, like, why that was. You know, I hear from some places that, you know, for regulatory reasons, just a lot of people just don't even want to touch the U.S. Uh, and I guess that's understandably. So I just wanted to know: is that your experience? Um, and 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 if not, what was your experience? Yep. Uh, so just caveat. So we we can issue to over 130 countries. The list is on our website. Uh, if you go to our frequently frequently asked questions, we'll have a list of the countries. Okay, um, got it. The reason for the U.S. being that the U.S. is very very strong against people issuing. So uh, I, mean, I I could I could get into this if if you want. But maybe just sort of on a high level, uh, visa, visa, visa partners, visa issuing banks in Europe, uh, sorry, in the US are feeling very strongly about, um, they're sort of very protective about people issuing from outside the US to users in the US. Issuing banks are not going to take the risk of issuing passively in the US, uh, because they fear they're going to get blowback or from visa or whatnot. Which is part of the reason why we're able to issue sort of around the world, but we're not able to issue to the U.S. So, when, when you're seeing when you're seeing a bunch of these Bitcoin debit cards that come out that have, you know, we can issue around the world, but we can't issue to the U.S. That's mostly the reason why. You also have uh, the debit cards that are issuing the U.S. only, and that's it, it. Very much goes along those ways. I mean, once you get to issue in the U.S., you, you know, you, you get your regulations in check. Um, you've sort of tapped into a really big market already. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, if someone were to have a card shipped elsewhere, but then use it in the U.S., would the yeah, shake works. card still work? Yep. Yep. We're in the U.S. Uh, we're in the Bay Area, and uh, we're using our card. It's, it's not a problem. Okay. All right. It's a visa. It can be accepted anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere visa is accepted. Always. There are all. Say again. Thirty-six million merchants around the world. 
Well, that is an acceptable number to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, John, uh, congrats on the just week long public beta now for Dash. Uh, that all sounds pretty interesting, and I look forward to updates from you in the future. And thanks for your time. Have a nice day. Saddle up, buckaroo, because Pete and I are coming to your city to have a Dash meetup with you. That is, if you live in the following four cities. Mark your calendar because on Thursday, November 10th, we'll be in Salt Lake City. Wednesday, November 16th, we'll be in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Sunday, November 27th is Austin. And Tuesday, November 29th, we'll be in Albuquerque. You can find details about the times and locations by visiting dashdetailed.com. And finally, if you own a master node, there is a voting deadline coming up in about a week, so be sure to check out the current proposals into the treasury if you're the voting type. They can be easily seen at sites like dashvotetracker.com. All right, that's it. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next Wednesday. What happens when a member or many members of a crypto community require a kind of service that does not yet exist? Well, if you're talking about Dash, an entrepreneurial soul can simply apply for funding from Dash's treasury to make that service happen. And that is exactly what senior web developer Brett Clanton has recently done. And here to tell you more about it is Brett.